Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and today we're going to be discussing static variables and how to open multiple forms. So let's get started. So did you know or ha have you ever been curious about how is it that you're able to uh, declare a variable inside a subroutine or a function then later during the lifetime of your application access that subroutine or function again and don't you think an error would occur if you declare the same variable again because you're going back in there? Well, actually, what happens is when you're done with the subroutine or function, those variables are destroyed. Which also means when you reaccess those functions or variables, or those functions or subroutines, uh, you have to recreate those variables. So I'll give you an example of how this might be bad. So I'll set z as a double and I'll initialize it as zero and let's create a message box and inside it let's print z dot two string so as you could have guessed this first dialog box will always show zero because we're making z zero here and I don't know output for the title and then message box buttons dot okay now we want to mess with z a little bit right we want to change the value so let's create a function. So private function. And let's call it change because we want to change the variable of z. And then inside, we'll throw in by val. Uh, what should we call it? I'll call it, I don't know, z change as double. There we go. So that would be our little change variable. So this, well, I haven't write, wrote it out yet, so let me write that out. And let's change the z using that function that we just created. So, and then we'll be passing z in there. So we're going to set z equal to whatever z, whatever happens to z inside this function. So z change, this is the variable that will correspond with this z right here. So what do we want to have happen? Let's create a variable in here and call it y and set it to a double. Let's throw in hmm, y plus equals 5. So every time you go in there, y will go up by 5. And let's return, and then inside these parentheses, z change, so that's whatever z is when we go in there, plus y. And then under this function, we want to have another message box. In fact, I think I can just copy and paste this. So if I click Save, and then I run the application. There you go. I think I got everything in there. I click Add, and 0 pops up, of course. It will always be 0. But then when we go into the function, we added 5. Because we passed in the 0, so this is 0. And we created this variable called y and we added 5 to it, so 0 plus 5 is 5, and then we returned 5, so this now equals 5, thus making z equal to 5, so when we printed z, it printed 5. If I click it, if I click it again, it's still 5. It keeps starting over, because this variable y here is destroyed every time we leave the function. Well, what if we want to retain the value during the lifetime of this application? Well, what you can do is make it a static variable, which basically means, so replace the dim with static, that the variable will remain during the life cycle of the application. So if I run this, I click add, we get the zero, then we get five. If I click add again, still zero, but now it's 10. That's because it kept that five there, and then we added five more to it, so it was five plus five is 10. So if we do it again, and it keeps working, keeps adding 5 every time. So that's about it for static variables. They can be very helpful if you intend on changing values during the course of the, uh, the application. So I can now get rid of this, and now we're going to learn how to create multiple forms. So how do you go about doing that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. What you do is, you see how it says form1.vb? This is our form right here. So how do you go about creating a new one? Well, what you can do is right click on your project right here, click add or highlight over add, and then you can throw in a new Windows form. So we'll click on that, 
and then we want you can choose what you want like the only other one that we know of would be a console where is the console anyways oh, I have no idea where, I, where it is well we're just gonna be using a Windows form and let's click uh, oh yeah what do we want to name it I'm gonna show you the short little word like you know how I use BTN for button or LBL for label for forms just use FRM and then whatever you want to call it so I'll call it second and there we go here's our second form you can click the view code if you wish to check out the form here and this is the code the design and then you can go back to the form and design for your original form so how do you open it well first of all let's uh... you know what? I'll just rename this one I'll call it BTN open and then down here whoops there we go I'll call it open and then I'll hit enter and there we go there's our changes and we will want it to open this new form here so how do we go about doing that well let's double click this now notice how over here it says BTN open now because that's a different name we have to create an instance of this new class now we're not going to be learning classes now but it is a new class of this form but you don't really need to worry about that now but in order to in order to do this type out the variable name then whatever you would like to call it I'll call it second since that's just the name of the new form and as but then before we get to the data type and it's not actually a data type uh, we have to use the new keyword and that's something we're gonna be learning about when we uh, deal with classes and objects form there it is form second so as new and then the name of that new class that we created which is this windows form right here but this creates the instance of it but how do we actually open it in order to open it type out the the object you created yes this is an object not a class or excuse me it's an object not a uh, variable actually but uh just type out second dot then in order to open it you can type out show followed by parentheses and now I'm gonna have to uh, throw out a comment so show opens new windows form so I'll click save and now let's run this application so if I click open well here's the new one but notice how you can still go between these two well what if you don't want to allow that allow the user to go between the two forms well, what you can do is use what's called the show dialog and opens new form with focus only on new form I hope I spelled everything correctly there so if I change this to show dialog click save and then I run this if I click open uh, this automatically had focus and notice I can't go back to this one now so that's very important if you don't want people to tamper with two forms at the same time okay so that's the show dialog and I'm gonna keep it like that now just like with the closing and you know what I should go to the new form uh, give you give yourself the ability to close it and just so you know in the new form this is when we start to really use things such as when you double click this you see now we have the form load event uh, I haven't really used it before but this is where it gets pretty important if you want to ever just you know add things on there but uh you know what let's just use buttons and learn how to access forms from other forms so on here let's just create a button off the wideness just a little bit and let's call this one close so btn close and since these are private you don't have to worry about giving them different names all these subroutines are private so ampersand close then you double click this see since it's private you don't have to worry about giving it a different name uh, as opposed to these uh, the BTN close that we have or actually we don't have a BTN close here but trust me on that one Be don't make them public these things and in order to close it you can type in me dot close so if I run the application 
I click open, we have our close button and it closes it, but notice that this one's still open. Uh, the me refers to the object that you're currently on, but notice that you can also throw in the uh, name of the form as well, or name of the object. So you can go second, or you know, you can go to form second like this. That was the name of the other form that we gave it. Whoops, I didn't mis misspelled it. Like that, and these are different ways you can access it. So you could actually access other ones as well, but um. Now we're going to have to actually learn how to access labels or uh, information from other forms. So what if we wanted to, I don't know, type something in over here? Or maybe let's just do a button that simply puts in text into the label of this other form here. So how would you go about doing that? So first of all, whoops, there we go. We need to create a new button on here. So I'm going to copy this and click paste. And then on this, let's call it btn string. And then down here, we can call it string. And let's have it add the word hi to the label on here. Well, how do you go about doing that? Well, let me, allow me to double click this. Now within this, within the string one here, so allow me to get rid of the form load event since we're not going to even use that. It's too much stuff now. Let's throw in, first of all, let's throw in our try catch. Message box dot show ex dot message error. Okay. Error. Okay, so a bunch of stuff. Uh, now we want to add something to the label. Well, you can't just type in label like this. Look, label output, it, it's not popping up in the IntelliSense. Or in order to do that, we have to refer to this form right here, which is called Form 1. So just type in Form 1, or whatever the name of the form is, dot label, and there it is. There's label dot output, followed by text. And we'll e set it equal to, hello, I don't know, brother form. I guess you could say they're brothers to each other. And I think that should work. So, set it up there. Click open. We got a new one. It's string. And look, it added text to the other form. And yeah, that's how you access form elements from, or how to, yeah, access form controls from another form, is you uh, just throw out the form name first, followed by the control, and then whatever you would like to do to it. So, that's about it for this tutorial. And just for a sneak peek, in the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to, how to create a module. And basically what they are is it allows you to throw in, you know, full, uh, functions, procedures, subroutines, uh, all in here that can be accessed by uh, multiple forms. And it makes it very uh, simple to access functions if you want multiple forms to be able to access them. Uh, so until then, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.